good systems engineering is not just about specifying things and hoping they work. Good systems engineering is about proving that they work. How can we use the embedded simulator in Genesis to prove that our design will actually work? We have just drawn this behavioral diagram. I'm going to open it in a separate window for a specific reason. So here with system context, I'm gonna to go to my views ribbon and ask for an activity diagram. You could ask for any behavioral diagram. I'm gonna ask for activity. And from here, I'm going to, in the ribbon, open the simulator view. Again, available from any functional view. And once that opens, I'm going to use the Windows trick. I'm going to click in the title bar and I'm gonna drag drop to the edge to dock it. And then I'm gonna ask for my activity diagram and the other. This allows me to look side by side at my static representation of behavior, activity diagram in this case, along with my dynamic view. Now, at this point, one of the things that I like to do is get my toolbox out of the way. I could close it totally, but I can also move it. These panels are completely movable in Genesis. So if I click this and make it floating, it popped off my screen. So I could float it anywhere, but I can also just redock it to the other side. So it's still available. I still have my nice viewport, but I've got kind of a cleaner visual line between my diagram and my simulation. In my simulation, I wanna do a couple things as I get started. First, I'm going to toggle this deferred rendering, click it, and it becomes real-time rendering. When I am doing debugging or when I'm stepping someone through, I like to have real-time rendering so that I can see my timeline build up. I also don't have a very big timeline, so I'm gonna change my scale here from normal to large. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and run my simulator. Now, as I hit run, you'll notice we have highlighting over in the behavioral view that helps us trace through the flow of control. If I wanted to step through, I could see it as well. Any behavioral diagram will show that, and it helps you in the diagnostic. What does our timeline now tell us? Well, at the bottom, we have a very detailed event transcript if we want, but our timeline now tells us when certain functions were active. Dark green is a function that has no trigger. Yellow represents where a function is waiting because it does not have a trigger. Green is where that same function executes. If we were using resources in our model, uh, rows would indicate where a function was waiting for execution. Okay, that's fairly simple, but where did these numbers come from? We did not specify durations anywhere. Well, I could come back over into my diagram and double click. Something most people miss is the fact that these labels are representations of entities. So I can double click on one to see its property sheet. Let's look at start brewing cycle. So I'm gonna double click start brewing cycle, get to its property sheet, and we will see that something that we are able to specify for functions is the duration. How long does this take? There is no value specified here. Genesis is set up to run your simulation with as little data as possible so that from moment one, from day one, you can begin to dynamically validate your system design. If Genesis doesn't have the value specified, it uses defaults. They're set up in the preferences, but by default, if you don't specify a duration, it takes a normal distribution mean of 10 standard deviation of one. Well, let's come in here and change a duration. Start brewing cycle is really effectively an instantaneous function. So I'm going to click these ellipses over here by duration. And I can see that a duration can be a constant number. It can be a random, one of 19 different distributions. It could be even be a detailed script if we wanted it. In this case, it's fairly simple. I'm gonna put a relatively low number here. I'm gonna put 0.1 because that's effectively instantaneous, at least within this time scale. And I could reset and run again. What this would allow you to do is both dynamically validate your logic, but also if you had specific timing parameters that you were after, it would allow you to check your timing budgets. 
let's assume that we're working an autonomous braking system. We understand that we have from sensor detection to needing to stop, we have 1.5 seconds. Well, we can try to allocate that time out across the sensing function, the analysis function, the actuation function, the braking function, and we can start to see, do these time budgets work? Let's do something else. Let's actually change our behavior. And so I'm going to add another trigger. I'm going to select drip hot water. I'm going to shift click turn on machine. And I'm going to use the connect via trigger command up in the ribbon. And I'm going to create a new trigger called bad trigger. And the reason I'm calling it a bad trigger is this is not a realistic scenario. I am having a basically feedback flow upstream. And we're going to see that this is going to break our simulation, but the key is using it to understand how we debug our behavior. So I can reset, I can run. I will see now I'm warned that my simulation was not able to complete successfully. I can see from the highlighting, I have two different functions in the wait state. They're highlighted in yellow with a little hatching behind it. I can see timeline information, et cetera. Okay. What I really want to do when I'm looking at debugging a behavioral problem is down here now I see blocked events. I can expand that to show a little more, and I see no available item from trigger queue on signal. So this trigger never arrived here. Subprocess branch processor has not completed, but I can't tell which one it tells me process 1.2. How do I know what process 1.2 is? Well, over here in the simulator, you can choose to show the execution hierarchy. If I expand that, we have a new panel. I can click the triangle up front, and in fact, I can right click to expand all. And now we see an execution hierarchy that maps to this process flow over here. So I start off with a parallel that has two branches, a user branch and a coffee maker branch, and I see the numbers. So number 1.2, number 1.2 never completed. That makes sense because it never got started. What I can use is I can use this to begin to deduce that this trigger never occurred, it never flowed up here, so that this was never able to flow down here. By the way, one more thing that I can turn on in my simulator is I can turn on database entities. And this allows me to control what shows up on my timeline. I can toggle either classes of information on or off or individual things. So I could toggle on to show my items, for example. So now that we've debugged our problem, let's select bad trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and delete it from the database. I want it completely out. So I'm going to right click and select delete. I could just use the delete key. It warns me, good. It's out of the diagram and out of the database. If I reset and run again, I should find success, okay? One more thing while I'm here. So we've seen how we can simulate. We can see how we can set particular values how does simulation work across levels? Well, I said that a control double click effectively dives in. It opens the same diagram on an entity. Let's look at the grind bean functions. And let's say that we wanted to specify the next level of behavior. I could hold down the control key, double click grind beans. I could also go up to the view menu and open an activity diagram. But I'm going to put a very simple three-step process here just to show how we simulate across levels. Uh, so the first function is just going to be start. Now, here's a shortcut that most people don't know. If I double click an entity, it adds it to the bottom of the branch. So I don't have to drag over. I can just double click new entity and I'm gonna call this one grind. And then I'm going to add one more called stop not overly sophisticated enough to highlight what we're doing. Now, if I reset my simulator, run it, we will see a new notation on our timeline. We will see this green hash 
that lines up with the beginning of start all the way through the ending of stop. And what's happening is it's the lowest level of the model that matters. Genesis ignores the higher level abstraction when it hits grind beans and looks inside and executes its behavior. If you want to change that, how do you do it? That is another property on the property sheet. So I could double click grind beans to get its property sheet. And in this case, the property that I'm looking for is execute decomposition. Most often we wanna work at the lowest level. Let's toggle that off, let's turn it to false. And so what this says is please don't go inside, just execute my level. I can reset, run more, one more time. There are really four levels of dynamic validation you can get here. The first level is absolutely free and it should always be done. And that's checking for deadlocks. That's what occurred when we had the bad trigger. That's validating your system behavior, your system logic. The next level of effort requires a little more investment and that's to do a timing analysis. The third level is more investment if you want to do a resource contention analysis. What if you've got multiple things competing for the same resource? Think Apollo 11, when they were turning, oh, sorry, Apollo 13, when they were turning on items in the lunar lander to see what forced them over a power budget. The fourth thing that you can do is constrained link analysis. Links are exchanging items, they're carrying items. What happens when those links get congested? At this point, we are done with our coffee maker example and done with a quick walkthrough of behavior.